Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. I'm Cassie, Marketing Supervisor at Genscript, and I'll be the moderator for the webinar today. So a little background about Genscript for those who are new to us. Genscript is the leading life sciences research and application service and product provider in various fields from basic life sciences research to translational biomedical development, industrial synthetic products, and cell therapeutic solutions. The topic for today's webinar is Enhancing Strategies for COVID-19 Solutions in Diagnosis, Vaccine Development and Therapies. Let me quickly introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Leong Haowing. Dr. Leong is the field application scientist supporting the protein expression and antibody production services at Genscript. Dr. Leong graduated from the National University of Singapore in 2011, majoring in pharmacology and neuroscience. She has more than 10 years of research experience in molecular biology techniques and extensive uh, knowledge in protein structure modeling, protein expression, and its purification. This webinar will take around 40 minutes and we'll have about 15 minutes for Q&A session later. You can type in your questions in the chat box and we'll answer them after the presentation. If we didn't get to answer your questions during the Q&A session, we'll email the answers back to you after this webinar. So now, without further ado, we'll let Dr. Leung to start her presentation right now. Dr. Leung, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Casey, for the introduction. Um, yes, good afternoon, everyone here. Thanks for taking time off uh, from your busy schedule to attend the webinar. And I'm Hao Wing, and uh, I'm the Field Application Scientist for Genscript. And it is my pleasure here to share the current trend in the industry in how we could actually enhance the strategies for COVID-19 solutions in diagnosis, uh, vaccine development, and its therapies. So for today's presentation, I will first discuss the current status of COVID-19 pandemic and what are some of the current strategies in uh, tackling and controlling uh, COVID-19. How far are we in getting out of the pandemic and what are the possible future remedies required? Last but not least, how we could use science to provide solutions in hopefully eradicating uh, COVID-19. So started around in um, December 2019, as such the name COVID-19, it has been nearly more than one and a half years since its first confirmed report from uh, Wuhan in China. And since then, COVID-19 has spread rapidly, affecting billions of people around the world. And uh, today, as of today, the total number of reported cases report to be more than 209 million cases, causing nearly 4.3 million in deaths worldwide. So um, for the past one and a half year, um, scientists all over the world have been working tirelessly on a multinational effort uh, to identify the uh, a novel coronavirus. The SARS coronavirus to SARS-CoV-2 has been identified as the etiologic agent of this uh, disease. So the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2, previously named uh, 2019 nCoV, is composed of uh, the S1 and the S2 domain. Uh, the S1 domain contains a receptor binding domain uh, that can specifically bind to the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, ACE2, uh, the receptor on the target cells. It is believed that the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, RBD, uh, has a potential value for the diagnosis of the virus. However, currently, uh, the approved treatment of choice is uh, for this uh, disease, uh, for COVID-19, is just a symptomatic kind of treatment, uh, treating and curbing the inflammation uh, caused by COVID-19. As such, anti-inflammatory drugs such as baricitinib and uh, toclizumab um, typically used as uh, anti-inflammatory drugs for rheumatic uh, arthritis uh, or steroidal drugs such as the desmethasone are used. In addition, as there, is, there are currently uh, no targeted anti-SARS-CoV-2 drugs available, the approved antiviral drug Remdesivir, a uh, broad-spectrum uh, antiviral medication is used in conjunction with the anti-inflammatory uh, desmethasone. Uh, with it start only in the year uh, 2019, considering it is a public emergencies, uh, the 
uh, Food and Drug Administration FDA has also authorized the emergency use authorization EUA for some of the unapproved therapies such as the anti SARS CoV 2 monoclonal antibodies uh, like the Casavirimab and uh, in the Vemimab and the Sotrovimab. So in addition, much effort has been embarked on identifying appropriate vaccines to pro uh, provide protection against COVID-19 with 10 commonly used commonly used vaccines of different nature uh, such as uh, mRNA ba uh, based vaccine or a denovirus based vaccine or to carry the spike protein or even a peptide vaccines. In addition, there are more, tra uh, there are more tra the traditional vaccines that uses an inactivated uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, 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 um, to create the immune response on a, uh, uh, in the vaccinated person. So despite progresses in providing uh, targeted therapies and vaccines, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 is still is rapidly mutating and increasing its transmissibility and also increasing the severity of the disease. So for currently, four major mutant variants have been identified up to date uh, with the new one coming up, the lambda also coming up. Um, but I have highlighted here the four major ones uh, with uh, the B1.17, the alpha strain, the B1.351, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the beta strain, and the P1 uh, gamma strain, and of course the most recent uh, B1.617.2 uh, delta strain. Due to its high virulence, uh, such strains have also spread rapidly or uh, even more rapidly than in some instances where it was where it first originated to many other parts of the world. So the aforementioned um, variants are due to QE mutations in the spike protein, such as the N five zero one Y um, uh, at the RBD of the spike protein. This mutation is found in all three of the mutant variants: the alpha, the beta, and the gamma. And in addition, uh, E four eight four K and uh, k 417 n mutations are seen uh, in the B1.351 uh, and the P1, uh, for instances. Uh, for the recent Delta strain, two other mutations are also observed. Uh, that is the E454Q uh, uh, and the L452R are observed. Such mutations are observed uh, either to increase the ACE2 binding, uh, escape the host immune system, or enhance uh, the ability to replicate uh, or it can could affect the furin cleavage in increasing exposure of the spike protein to the ACE2 binding. As such, there have been concerns that uh, the current vaccines available may not be efficacious against some of the mutations and the strains. And as such, more, much more studies have to carry out to ensure the efficacy of the therapies and also the vaccines and also preventive uh, measure against the new uh, COVID-19 variants. And also work has to be done to ensure that we provide solutions to keep up with the ever-changing viral genome. So in GenScript, as a partner for a research scientist to embark in making research easier, we have several platforms and solutions for SARS-CoV-2. We have uh, products and materials that could be used for nuclear assay, assay uh, uh, development to make RT, uh, qPCR diagnostic kits quickly uh, to quickly identify the source of COVID-19 and to curb its spread. We have proteins uh, that could be used in serological assay to determine the efficacy of the vaccine in vaccinated, in vaccinated individuals. In addition, uh, such proteins can also be used uh, to study the mechanism of the action uh, the, of the different variants, and also we provide cell lines um, uh, to for uh, for drug discoveries against uh, COVID nineteen. And of course, our extensive uh, COVID nineteen reagent antibodies are uh, not only to be used as a good antibody pairs uh, in sandwich ELISA diagnostic kits or even lateral flow diagnostic assays. They could also demonstrate a source or a point of study to further optimize as a therapeutic uh, a, a target. And last but not least, our extensive COVID peptide pools and libraries ranging from research rate to uh, 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 um, 
to clean grade can also boost with the vaccine development and its validation. So as indicated in my previous slides, uh, the understanding, uh, understanding the mechanism of action uh, is crucial in identifying potential therapies. So targeting the cell entry could be one means of a uh, drug therapy. So cell entry of coronavirus, as mentioned, depends on the spike protein uh, binding to a cellular receptor and priming, a, uh, which is actually primed by a cellular protease. And recent studies have demonstrated that the angiotensin converting uh, enzyme to ACE2 uh, serves as the uh, surface receptor to bind to the uh, S protein in SARS-CoV-2 and to facilitate uh, entry of this coronavirus in the cell. As such, in JustScript, we have uh, developed a single clone stable cell line with high expression of these key regulators of COVID-19, uh, such as the SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, spike protein or the human uh, 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 AC2 as powerful cell line tools for discovery to treat uh, COVID-19. The AC2 uh, cell line in JanScript is validated uh, for stable H uh, AC2 uh, uh, expression and uh, S protein uh, receptor binding. And they are easy to use in binding assays or in, as immunogens. Some of the applications uh, um, include uh, neutralizing uh, neutralization assays to screen uh, antibodies or other molecules that can block a, a pseudovirus or live virus infection. Or it can be used in uh, affinity analysis of uh, the antibody or other molecules to the spike protein. Um, uh, it can also be used as a form of in vitro cell models for investigating a uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection mechanism. So in this case study uh, that I have shared here, uh, Rogers and all uh, had published in, in Science in 2020 had used uh, such uh, AC2 expressing cell lines to actually evaluate the monoclonal antibodies of uh, the and its capability and their capabilities for neutralizing uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, pseudovirus. So antibodies are first uh, grouped according to the epitope uh, specificities and uh, neutralization IC50s uh, are reported. Uh, in micrograms per liter. Uh, so um, monoclonal antibodies are evaluated for the neutralization of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, pseudovirus using the HeLa AC2 target cells. So the most potent uh, neutralizing uh, antibodies were those that are actually directed at the RBD-A uh, um, epitope. To evaluate whether the RBDA epitope that send the AC2 binding site, we uh, they next perform the cell surface uh, uh, computation assay. Um, uh, monoclonals were first uh, mixed with uh, the E, uh, uh, the 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 uh, the S or the RBD protein, uh, to, and measure the binding uh, ability to HeLa AC2 target cells as a measure of competition to the cell surface AC2 uh, receptor. So in addition to the AC2 cell line, we also have the spike protein cell line that express the full length uh, spike protein inc that includes the S1 and the S2 domain. Uh, so they are also validated for a stable uh, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein expression and human AC2 binding. And they are available either in the CHO K1 or the HEC system. So uh, Tan in uh, 2020 had uh, published a uh, uh, use such a uh, uh, spike protein uh, cell line to generate a uh, pseudovirus-based virus uh, neutralization test, PVNT. Uh, so just a brief introduction on uh, the neutralization tests uh, that are currently uh, used and available. So we have the conventional virus uh, neutralization test, the PVNT, uh, which requires the use of a uh, live SARS-CoV-2 to test the efficacy of neutralizing uh, antibodies um, in preventing the live uh, SARS-CoV-2 in entering the AZ2 uh, receptor expressing cells. Um, such CVNT actually requires BSL-3 containment facility and the process of testing is tedious, requiring uh, two to four days. Uh, PVNT, on the other hand, uh, as the name suggests, use a pseudovirus uh, 
uh, expressing spike protein um, as the envelope protein uh, to determine the neutralization capability of the antibodies. Such PVNT requires less stringent requirements, so BSL2 will be sufficient. Uh, however, there is still the need to use a uh, live virus and cells. So Tan and all in this study had generated such PVNT using the spike uh, protein uh, cell line. Uh, to generate the envelope protein and package it as a, a pseudovirus using Delta G, uh, VSV G envelope plasmid. And to compare and develop a surrogate, this is to compare and develop a surrogate of VNT uh, in that such tests do not require uh, the live virus or cells and is based solely on the virus host interaction of the RBD and the ACE2 receptor on the ELISA plate. So comparing the three types of tests, uh, they are all comparable, of course, uh, while of course the uh, SVNT will decrease the need of a high stringency of a BSL setup, uh, while a PVNT mimic a proper study of a viral entry into the cells and to determine the efficacy of the neutralizing antibodies. So as such, depending on the needs of the research question, so different VNT can be, uh, could be suitable. And of course, as mentioned, uh, to develop uh, SVNT proteins such as the RBD, uh, which have been identified as a crucial interactor for AC2 binding will be required. In fact, uh, this study by Tan and all, which was a collaboration with GenScript, and we have since then developed many of these COVID-19 uh, proteins used in these studies for SVNT use. And considering this, uh, GenScript has also moved forward and provide uh, various mutant proteins uh, from uh, various variant strains such as the N501Y in the alpha strain, the uh, E484 and the K417N and the N5501Y in the beta and the uh, gamma strain and also the E484Q and the L452R and the T478K in the delta strain. And good that which are good for developing, uh, for example, as mentioned before, uh, the SVNT to neutralization uh, antibody drug discoveries. Such proteins are already tagged with uh, HRP for SVNT development. So these mutants are also available without the HRP to allow mechanism action of studies, uh, mechanism of action studies. As mentioned, these mutants work on several mechanisms, uh, for example, to increase uh, the ACE2 uh, binding uh, affinity to the ACE2, or it can uh, help to escape a virus host uh, immune uh, response, or it can increase its replication uh, ability, or they may be uh, the mutants may uh, have uh, advantage in modulating uh, the cleavage by fluorine in order to prime the S protein for the TMPR SS2 processing to review a uh, fusion peptide at the S protein for a viral host membrane fusion. So the N501Y is one of the key uh, contact residues with the receptor binding domain uh, and has been identified uh, as a, uh, uh, increasing the binding affinity to the human and the murine uh, AC2. Uh, the spike protein mutation 69 to 70 may also help uh, the virus to escape the host immune response. Um, the spike uh, protein mutation D641G uh, also become dominant during uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, also become dominant, and the D four six four one G mutation enhance its replication ability in the upper uh, respiratory tract um, transmission ability, and also viral loads in a patient's lung uh, epithelial cells. It may also affect affect vaccine efficacy and uh, antibody therapy. So there are many of these uh, different kinds of mutants that are available and GenScript for clients uh, or for researchers to look into the mechanism of action. So in particular, uh, uh, L542R uh, was of particular concern because the B1.429 uh, is possibly more transmissible. And further study has actually confirmed this. And CDC has actually listed the B1.429 and the related uh, 1.427 as variants of concern and sites are uh, saying that uh, they would expect uh, exhibit at least a 20% uh, increase in the viral transmissibility. 
So we have such wide range of COVID-19 mutants available because we are Genscript has more than 15 years of uh, experience in uh, protein synthesis, uh, protein expression services are uh, generating more than 10,000 proteins uh, such as uh, transmembrane proteins, kinases, uh, co-expression proteins, cytokines, growth factors, viral envelope proteins, uh, nuclear and uh, hormone receptors, and also antibodies. Not only so, we have uh, delivered more than 5,000 recombinant antibody projects with uh, more than 95% success rate. And how do we do that? Because it is through our use of proprietary technologies that we have developed, such as the GenSmart uh, codon optimization technology and the high-density uh, uh, expression platform. Uh, this allows us to deliver high-quality products, but also in a cost-effective manner. In GenScript, we have four different expression systems to allow us to have a good, to express good quality proteins at a competitive pricing that can suit uh, your downstream application and also uh, uh, cater to certain needs and requirements of your protein. For example, while uh, E. coli is a cost-effective way to uh, get the protein at cheap costing, it may not have you know pros translational modification that could be important for function or binding capabilities of proteins. So we. We, have, we also have the insect and the mammalian system may be a better choice in such instances, uh, but of course this may come with a higher price for the proteins. So that's why in GenScript we have uh, various choices of COVID-19 proteins of uh, different domains with different tags uh, in diff by different expression system to suit the budget and also the applications of the researchers. And of course, as mentioned earlier on, antibodies for targeting SARS-CoV-2 not only allow the development of uh, serological assays to determine the efficacy of vaccines, but also uh, to determine uh, or track individuals on the protection against uh, COVID-19 after vaccination. Uh, Anti-SARS-CoV-2 monoclonal antibodies are a good form of therapy for COVID-19. And considering the variants are uh, now uh, widely uh, um, uh, uh, um, in, in the world, uh, transmitting in the world, a uh, more antibody discovery against uh, COVID-19 is required. And to enhance the possibility of uh, uh, a success of costly projects such as uh, monoclonal antibody production, and also to give the best value of monoclonal antibodies, uh, GenScript has several methods. We have uh, uh, time and tested hybridoma technology. Uh, we also use innovative technologies such as the uh, visa cloning and also um, the single B cell sorting uh, to accelerate B cell selection and also to capture a large B cell repertoire. So to elaborate on the hybridoma technology that we use, so upon harnessing the animal's immune system to generate antibodies of high specificity and affinity uh, due to their intrinsic affinity maturation abilities, we use reliable and time-tested hybridoma technology to immortalize antibody producing B cells, producing the hybridoma cell lines to generate high quality monoclonal antibodies. And just by growing them, um, the hybridoma cell lines would be able to provide us with an unlimited supply of antibodies. And in addition, GenScript, uh, we also tap on the GenScript uh, MonoRap uh, technology, which is which enable us uh, to generate a large number of uh, high quality of rapid monoclonals uh, to maximize the success of identifying monoclonal antibodies uh, for research applications such as uh, IHC or in therapeutics or if uh, even in diagnostic kits. So due to uh, the rabbit's superior immune system, they can generate antibodies of high affinity specific specificity, sensitivity, and stability uh, uh, than those uh, from other animal species. In fact, uh, rabbits, with uh, they have the robust and um, unique immune system also enable superior diversity of uh, antibody generation that is um, up to 10 to 100 times higher affinity compared to the rodents. So uh, just a little bit more about, you know, uh, how the monorep work, what's the work workflow of the monorep uh, in GenScript. So it involves in the isolation and the enrichment and the culturing of antigen positive B cells directly from a rapid peripheral blood mononuclear cells, PBMCs for screening and selection.
And with our optimized and proprietary technology, we are able to enrich and expand the B cells and use them directly for screening. And as such, uh, it is fusion-free uh, from lyenoma and it can avoid uh, the B cell loss. And um, such as such, we have a, a better ability to obtain a large cell pool of up to 10,000 memory B cells. So the desired monoclonal uh, clones are sequenced and recombinantly expressed. And many benefits of this approach include PBMC, uh, such that uh, only, such that the animals are not sacrificed. Uh, so we can go back to the animal after testing in the mon polyclonal uh, 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 antiserum, for example. Uh, it is uh, fusion-free, so it will avoid B cell loss and allow us to obtain a larger cell pool. So the lack of fusion also increased the efficiency of discovery and through B cell cloning, um, uh, we are able to achieve antibody in a high throughput manner in as fast as 18 weeks. However, despite uh, uh, various advanced technologies, some uh, uh, um, oh, so we also uh, for for this one we okay wait I think I skipped one okay yeah sorry uh, so we also have um. Another system, so despite the, the advanced technology that we have, such as the uh, hybridomide and also the uh, B cell cloning, uh, researchers also require more clones uh, to prevent missed opportunities and even higher success rates. And um, they sometimes require more time efficient uh, uh, antibody discovery. Tapping on the recent engineering fit, uh, the Beacon platform, which actually used the optofluidic system to allow the screening of uh, individual B cells. Uh, in a high throughput manner. Um, so, um, carrying the screening on a chip uh, with a different uh, chip assay available, such as the antigen and uh, specific bit assay, or the IgG capture assay, or even the GFP reporter cell assay, it allows uh, Im improve the speed and uh, also increase the diversity uh, of the antibodies that can be discovered during this uh, antibody discovery step. So in uh, in GenScript, we have also tried to compare, you know, the three different technologies, namely the hybridoma, the beacon, and the uh, and the mono uh, rat B cell cloning uh, uh, technology. And we have uh, GenScript have also joined hands with researchers and have worked tirelessly to generate, you know, high affinity and high diversity um, uh, antibodies against the antigens. Uh, uh, such as the RBD binding domain, uh, as shown here. So, uh, as mentioned, the spike protein has been um, uh, uh, recognized as a popular vaccine target uh, to develop a uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, so, many therapeutics are actually leveraging on the uh, uh, of uh, finding a neutralizing antibody that can block uh, the RBD and the AC2 interaction and thus to reduce the virus infectivity. And as such, high throughput and efficient antibody discovery is needed. So in JavaScript, how do we go about generating and you know the different uh, antibodies that we have uh, in JavaScript? So first, we actually uh, uh, after the rabbit immunization, we actually generated a cell suspension uh, from ram rabbit spleen, and then subsequently concentrated the antibody secreting cells using the uh, antigen and IgG positive B cell enrichment process that we have. Uh, altogether, we imported about um, over 15,000 cells onto the beacon system uh, into each well as shown here and uh, subjected to the cells to the antigen positive screening uh, using the antigen beads conjugated to uh, RBD. So eventually, we were able to identify a total of 142 RBD positive hits. So as you can see here, um, a total of eight monoclonal antibodies uh, were obtained in the beacon experiments compared to three in the hybridoma approach. And these uh, eight monoclonal uh, antibodies from the beacon platform also have a higher diversity uh, and it uh, span across uh, four epitope beans, while all of the hybridoma antibody uh, span across only one epitope bean. So the high antibody diversity could uh, successfully enable us uh, to have uh, multiple uh, generic antibodies for multiple different downstream applications, uh, making them excellent candidates uh, for uh, uh, sandwich pairs in, in vitro diagnostic kits or other assay development. Or they could also be uh, 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 allow uh, uh, researchers uh, as a start for potential development into 
uh, therapeutics uh, thanks to the many candidates that have the uh, neutralizing uh, efficacy. So um, uh, here we show uh, um, our B cell cloning approach. So uh, for our B cell cloning, we observe that uh, 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 we are able to also obtain a high number of uh, 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 positive uh, monoclonal antibody clones. A total of 16 monoclonal uh, antibodies were obtained through this uh, B cell cloning approach, uh, even though we did not load it into the uh, high throughput system on the beacon. Uh, we were also able to have a high diversity that span across 11 epitope beans. So the high antibody diversity uh, could enable us to do many downstream uh, applications. So such antibodies are rigorously tested for the AC2 uh, binding capabilities and uh, pseudovirus neutralization capabilities. And so they, are being, they have already been, as mentioned, to identify the epitope that it is binding to the RBD. And thus, it allows us to provide with the best antibody pairing, uh, for, for example, in sandwich ELISA IVD setup. And so they are also have already been tested for Western block and fax. So how do we obtain, you know, uh, uh, such antibodies with, uh, uh, with such different uh, high specificity and affinity? Uh, because of a series of proprietary antibody technologies that we have to ensure the success. For example, we have the Optimum Antigen uh, Design Program, uh, which is an advanced antigen design algorithm to optimize the likelihood of surface exposure and authenticity. Uh, we also have the Immunoplus technology to make use of key immunomodulators to circumvent uh, self-tolerance mechanisms and to allow B cells to generate a high affinity surrogate antibodies. So we also have epitope binning, uh, which is an independent uh, antibody validation in which the monoclonal antibodies are tested against one another to determine uh, which antibodies compete for the same uh, antigen epitope. So GenScript has also other proprietary uh, adjuvant system to quickly elicit a strong uh, and durable immune response uh, to generate high specific, uh, high specific antibodies. And last part, but not least, we have the express immunization and high efficiency uh, electrofusion to allow um, antibody generation with a speedy turnaround and at a large quantity and uh, high diversity. So as such, uh, we have available not only towards the RBD, we also have uh, antibodies that target uh, the S1, uh, neutralizing antibodies and antibody pairs uh, uh, of different uh, antibody formats, uh, host for different kinds of applications. And not only so, we also have uh, developed uh, antibodies for the S1. We also have uh, developed uh, antibodies against uh, the non-RBD binding antibodies, uh, uh, binding to the uh, to the non-RBD uh, region of uh, uh, S1 and S2. So in addition, uh, antibodies uh, binding to the nucleocapsid of the SARS-CoV-2 is also available for uh, different applications. And these are also good uh, as control antibody for COVID-19 studies. We also have neutralizing antibody standard for you to calibrate uh, uh, um, uh, while setting up uh, your SVNT or PVNT. So as mentioned, with our capabilities um, uh, earlier on, we, uh, we have capabilities in peptide uh, synthesis, having one of the world's largest automated synthesizer system, a uh, high throughput H2S library platform that we have in JavaScript. And we also have developed our own proprietary technology, such as the high scene technology and new pre-algorithm uh, to uh, um, uh, detect a uh, difficult to synthesize uh, uh, peptides and to uh, provide with the technology to synthesize uh, uh, to uh, difficult peptides. So we are well equipped to synthesize quality peptides for uh, COVID-19 research. So not only so, we are ISO 9001 certified and we have quality uh, management providing uh, MS and HPLC analysis as QC for our clients. And in addition, we provide a solubility testing, um, also a TFA counter ion removal, endotoxin control uh, for our peptides. 
So how could peptide be important or could help us in our uh, COVID-19 therapeutic development? So in this study by Maya and all, they have investigated the production of uh, nanoparticle vaccines uh, by covalently conjugating the self-assembled uh, 24-mere ferritin uh, to the receptor binding domain uh, RBD. And uh, and all the heptide repeat uh, subunits of the severe acute uh, of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Next, using the many different uh, peptide pools targeting the spike uh, 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 glycoprotein, Ma and all have validated that the nanoparticle vaccines uh, elicited a more antigen-specific uh, polyclonal, uh, polyfunctional uh, CD8 plus T cells expressing uh, the IFN gamma and IFN, uh, IF, IL2 and the TFN, uh, TNF alpha. Uh, then the monomer vaccines in the intracellular cytokine uh, Staining ICC as assays. In addition, our previous study on uh, SARS-CoV has also revealed SARS-CoV two has also revealed that the type one T cell uh, uh, T helper cell TH one bias uh, immune response and enhance protection against the virus infection, while uh, the TH two bias immune response induce a uh, vaccine associated enhanced respiratory disease. So um, they measured the percentage of uh, IFN uh, gamma uh, and CD four. Uh, 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 and CD4 plus uh, T cells, uh, T, the TH, which are the TH1 bias cells, and the IL4, uh, CD4 plus T cell, which are the TH2 bias cells in uh, using uh, ICCS across the different uh, vaccine group. Uh, so they found that the uh, nanoparticle vaccines induce a higher TH1 uh, base IF and gamma uh, uh, compared to the monomer vaccines. And the percentage of TH2 uh, bias uh, uh, were also no difference across these groups. So T, T cell uh, responses were further uh, confirmed by ELISA spot assay, uh, uh, indicating that the RBD and the RBD HR uh, nanoparticle vaccines are able uh, to induce strong and safe T cell immune response apart from B cell responses. So peptide pools generated uh, can be used for vaccine development and their validation in, uh, for example, as uh, shown here, in uh, ICC assay, assays like this. So as mentioned, uh, these are the different peptide pools available uh, targeting some of the crucial gene, uh, cycloprotein and spike protein harboring the mutants uh, for your uh, research. In addition, uh, we also have uh, peptide libraries for various uh, spike protein uh, uh, that over using uh, created using overlapping libraries to allow researchers to map epitope of interest and also to stimulate a T cell in T cell assay or to also either map the binding sites of spike protein with ACE2 uh, of a different purity uh, depending on the applications. And we have uh, various collaborations with researchers and also have uh, many expertise on peptides and the applications. Thus, thus, we understand the challenges um, while working with a T-cell activation assay. That is, uh, for example, the requirements of high priority to ensure no specific uh, activation of T-cells or uh, the need to have a low level of TFA to ensure low toxicity contributed by these chemicals uh, during a, a, a T-cell assay. As such, we have assurance for guarantee uh, TFA removal and also high priority uh, peptides with uh, stringent QC. As mentioned, we also have single peptides available that could be good for uh, generating a peptide vaccine uh, or for eliciting uh, antibody responses in animals for antibody discovery against uh, COVID-19. Last but not least, besides uh, the various ways we could help researchers with COVID-19 research, vaccine validation and development, uh, diagnostic kits are also crucial to ensure the quick identification of COVID-19 clusters to curb their spread. So several detection methods are available, such as the nuclear uh, detect acid detection or the serology detection uh, using antibodies. So in Genscript, in addition to the PVN, TSVNT, and uh, also providing antibodies for IVD kits development, we do have the COVID-19 molecular diagnosis platform available. So using the four target genes that are highly specific for the SARS-CoV-2, 
namely the of uh, ORF one AB and the RDRP and the ENN gene. Uh, we have uh, developed oligonucleotide uh, pl primers uh, and probes against these genes for use in an RT PCR assay, in which uh, the RT PCR is recognized as the gold standard uh, for uh, COVID nineteen detection. So a typical workflow will include the following, uh, that is the sample collection and the viral extraction followed by the QP, uh, QRT PCR uh, followed by a results validation. So these are the primers that are available in GenScript. So um, uh, the different standard uh, that could uh, fulfill your need uh, that is for research use and also for clinical use. So with all the information put together, I hope I have shared some of the ways in which we could uh, enhance the strategies uh, in developing uh, COVID-19 solutions uh, for accurate diagnosis and vaccines and therapies uh, using the technologies that we have here in GenScript. Thank you for your time. Yep. Any questions? Thanks, Dr. Leung. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Leung, for the great presentation. Uh, we have some questions from the floor. Uh, let's just answer them. But uh, for other questions, uh, you can still put in the questions on the questions box. So the first question, uh, can you synthesize peptides with all D amino acids? If yes, can you provide me a rough idea of, turn of turnaround time? Okay, we, so we do uh, have uh, synthesizing uh, peptides uh, with D amino acids. So um, uh, do send us your sequence because it will depend on the purity and also uh, the, 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 the purity and also the, 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 the total length of the sequence. So with a longer length, of course, uh, 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 there will be a, a longer time that is required, the purity also. And also we need to understand, you know, uh, the hydrophobicity of the peptide. So do send us your sequence. Uh, the, uh, incorporating D amino acids is available for peptide synthesis in GenScript. Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Leong. For diagnostic and detection of COVID-19, uh, are these kits uh, received in CVIVD or FCS already? Uh, can, can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, for diagnostic and detection of COVID-19, this kit was mm -hmm. received uh, CVIVD or FCS already? Uh, so uh, you, you are meaning the, the kit that are available? Uh, we provide uh, the tools for building up the kits, if uh, I didn't understand wrongly. So we have, uh, like for example, the, the primers uh, that are available for uh, building up uh, the kits, uh, the RTP, uh, RTPCR uh, diagnostic kits for COVID-19. Uh, we also have the antibodies uh, that are available uh, um, to build up uh, the ELISA or LFA flow kits that uh, could be used uh, for your uh, this kids a generation. Okay, That's thanks, Doctor Leung. Yeah. Uh, I hope we done. <laughs> I hope we did. <laughs> okay. Uh, for the next question, uh, what is the purity of the protein antigen that is acceptable to you? What buffer should I use? Uh, in what kind of application? Because uh, it will defer um, the purity that is required for 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 antigen. That is, uh, I assume <laughs> this question is for antibody generation. Is it for antibody generation? Yeah. Uh, did they? Yes, okay, it's for, for antibody, antibody generation. generation. <laughs> uh, so what is uh, the purity, is it? Uh, yes, correct. Uh, at least uh, 85% purity. Uh, usually, okay. the what buffer, is the buffer that would be best? Uh, PBS. PBS. Okay. Thanks a lot. Buffer. That would okay. be that is the usual one that we use. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, the mm -hmm. next question: What are the likely success rate for the use of spike protein peptides for passive immunization? Uh, what is the sorry? Uh, what are the likely success rate? for the use of spike protein peptides for passive immunization? Passive immunization. Um, that 
uh, I think it will depends on uh, the, the final downstream uh, ap application in terms of what is the readout that you are interested in looking at. So, yeah. Okay, maybe we can answer that uh, in more details yeah. after the presentation. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, what kind of antigen that you can accept for hybridoma generation? What kind of antigen that I can accept for hybridoma antigen? Uh, uh, what kind of, all kinds of antigen? What yeah, kind of we, antigen we, that you can accept? Yeah, it can be any kind of antigen. Uh, it can be peptide, it can be a protein, it can be hectane also. Okay, can. Yeah. Uh, the next question, uh, uh, what's the difference? Uh, do you mm -hmm. still have anything else to add on for the previous question? Yeah, uh, it can be, I don't know, if protein can be human, it can be uh, mouse and rabbits, you know, depending on... Um, like uh for example the host uh current the host like for example the, the 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 percentage homology with the mouse so this one we will evaluate you know to to advise on the back system to use uh like whether it's the mouse or the rabbit depending on the homology yeah so yeah we can do all kinds of antigens mm. okay thanks a lot dr leon uh, the next mm. question, uh, does GenScript provide virus-like particles for SARS-CoV-2? If yes, may I know the overview of the construction process through email? Uh, currently, we do not provide virus-like particles. Yeah, okay. not at and... the moment. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think let's answer the last question for now. Uh, what is the difference between protein AG purification and affinity purification in terms of yield? Uh, of course, protein AG, right? It is uh, it recognized the FC region. So uh, uh, theoretically, theoretically speaking, you know, uh, when we immunize the animal, you know, the 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 majority of the antibodies that I produce uh, that is going to be purified is against the. The, the antigen of interest but of course there will still be you know some uh that may be you know uh, not specific to the antigen so uh of course we have affinity uh purified uh ones which is specifically to the antigen uh so of course um uh the yield in terms of that will be slightly lower compared to the uh uh, uh, uh protein ag but um if it is carried out correctly, uh, if the background is not too, uh, that means your antigen compared to the, the, the background of the animal uh, is not too high, then of course it, it should be comparable. So it really depends on the, 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 the target of interest of the antigen, uh, the background of the animal that like, for example, if you want to, it to be a mouse antigen with a mouse, uh, then of course, you know, there may be some issue, you know, uh, yeah, so, Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Leung. So if there's no other questions from the floor, we'll close the session today. So feel free to email us if you have any other questions after this mm. session. So thank you once again, Dr. Leung, for the presentation and to all of you who joined us today. I hope you find this session beneficial to your work. So thank you, everyone, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.